Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And that's Kendall. She's well, she's cranky. She's deciding to be in here tonight um, because cats. So in this video, we're going to talk about the filmed Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Um, no, I'm not alone in this. This is not my favorite book in the series. So, um, sorry, listening for cranky toddlers. I think I just heard a cat. Um, we have more than one. We have four. Uh, three of which are under the age of one right now. Okay, so I don't like this book. Um, so, it's my least favorite book in the entire series. Harry is a dick and seems to have gone from I'm an intelligent human being to I'm a complete moron in the entire book and causes, basically causes Sirius' death and a whole lot of mayhem because he's an arrogant idiot and doesn't want to listen to anybody. And then he rants and raves and destroys things. Um, so I don't like this book. And this book ended up in my closet after I finished reading it. Um, I did not like it at all. Um, so color, <laughs> color that my opinion of the film. The film isn't bad. Um, I'm going to say this now. Uh, normally I say this at the beginning of the video. Um, I, and I say this, I covered everything. I'm covering the entire Harry Potter series. I did a whole intro where I rant and rave about Rowling. Um, again, I will say this, and I say this at the beginning of all these videos. Don't buy the books new. Buy them used. The films are different. She sold the rights. She just gets notoriety from them. Um, different for the um, Fantastic Beasts. She has to be on the uh, screenwriting credits there because she didn't write books for this ones, and she kind of made that as part of her deal. Um, I will link a book in the my intro if you want to check that out uh, called Harry a History that goes into that. Um, so no, she doesn't profit from that book either. <laughs> Thankfully, if you can, if I can find it, I will link in the uh, intro. So check out the rest of my videos. Check out my book description. Um, so let's move on to the film. Now I have the entire set here. Book four here. So this is my DVD set. Uh, feel free to buy the films. She again sold the rights. But uh, the, this film is better than book film four. I uh, check out my book, my review for that one where she literally left out. They literally left out half the book. Uh, and it makes no sense. So, and if you want more details on that, uh, check out the YouTuber Dom Noble. He used to love Harry Potter before Rowling showed her um, evilness and psychotic craziness about bigotry. Um, so, yeah, yeah. He no longer supports her, but he does a Lost in Adaptation channel. Uh, he's been doing this for a long time. He does this for a living as opposed to me, who's doing it for a hobby. Um, so he covers a whole Harry Potter thon, which no, is not child friendly, but is, it's entertaining. And he goes into a lot more detail than I do because this is, he, he was obsessed with the films. He read them, read the books multiple times. Um, so, and he, again, he does this for a living. So check out his channel if you're interested, one in general, because it's a great channel. If you're looking for something like uh, book, basically looking at how films compare to the books. Um, and again, he does this far better than I do. This is a very, very brief description here. Uh, they do better with this film than they did with the last one. So because it's a smaller book, I do not, I think it's behind me somewhere. Yes, it is. It's behind me. Um, but it's smaller than I believe book four. Uh, they, as usual, they cut out the Dursleys. They really do cut out the Dursleys. You get a little bit more than you do because the uh, Dementors show up. And I think I mentioned this in book three when I did the film review. They screw up the Dementors. They continue to screw up the Dementors. They make them weird flying around things. And apparently there's some sort of jump scare in this film, which makes no sense because, you know, Harry hears them right off. And the only way to get rid of them is the Protonus charm, which, yeah, they screw up in this film. They they net, they show Harry creating the full apparition of prongs in the third book, third, third film, and they never show it again, even though that's why he's able to convince people to let him teach them the defense against the dark arts, because uh, they're not, yeah, this is, uh, we'll get to there. But yeah, it's because a lot of, some wizards can't even do it. So, they, the fact that they cut that out is ridiculous. Um, but moving 
on. I mean, they do, yeah, they do the bare minimum. They make Harry a little bit nicer, which is probably a plus for this film. He really is a dick in this book. You really don't want to rant, root for Harry because he causes all sorts of problems and he probably gets serious as kill because he doesn't listen to logic. Um, and he's just very, very angry. He's a very, very angry 15 year old. Um, and Dumbledore does not make it better either. And they show this in the film where he just, he, he regrets not telling Harry things. So now he's just, he's cutting him out. He goes from, I'm your kind mentor to, I won't have anything to do with you. So yeah, you can kind of understand why Harry's pissed off, but again, he's really, really pissed off in this book. Um, let's see. They get a little weird with some of the scenes with Snape. They never do Snape very well, despite the fantastic actor. I mean, you have Alan Rickman. I mean, even I know he's a fantastic actor. He was. We lost him, sadly. Um, which is very depressing. But moving on. They get the decent... Like I said, this film is better than book four, and even better than book three in the adaptation sense. You get Harry... Um, they, besides, you know, the massive drama thing, he, you see a little bit more of the Dursleys. Again, it's dramatized. They cut some stuff out, but you get the point where um, he has to stay with his dad and uncle. Still, Doodley's become a bit thinner of a bully now is smoking and goofing off, and his parents still don't see that he's a bit of a dick. Though I think this book might be the turning point because um, one Harry saves his life because he realizes, oh, dear, magic can heart because of Dementors and things get very, very real. So moving on, uh, you, uh, they always summarize that. And then Harry ends up at the Weasleys. Things are very depressing because everything's secret. Percy, I, they cut him completely out. And I don't think they explain why Harry's, uh, why Percy's not there anymore. They cut out the entire, um, cause they cut him out most of book four. They cut out an entire backstory how he's, for the ministry, he's gotten high up with Fudge, who's denying everything's going on. Um, he denies that Voldemort comes back until the very, very end when, yeah, he's in the ministry. So it's like, yeah, you can't really deny him when he's staring at you. Um, but they cut all of that out. They, you know, they have a I think they cut out a lot of um, Grimwald Place. They also um, make it next to Muggles, which makes no sense considering the Black's family is um, very, very wealthy. And, um, you know, they're a lot like the uh, Malfoys. And, of course, you have Sirius, who was the Black sheep of that family. Uh, they had another son. You find out about that. You get some of that. Um, you definitely get a sense of how miserable Sirius is. Um, a little bit of how arrogant... Um, Snape has become because now he can, Sirius can't do anything. He's stuck hiding. Um, he's essentially imprisoned again, dealing with his mother's old photographs, the house he grew up in, which he hates, and the house elf they mostly cut out, um, which is, why well, can't I not remember him? Basically, his, yeah, the, the house elf is Creature, um, who's miserable, who his family's been, basically when they become useless, they get their heads cut off and mounted, and that's what he aspires to do. He hates Sirius because he was very loyal to um, the other house, Black, as opposed to Dobie, who hated his, hated his owners. Um, so he hates Sirius like crazy, which shows, and you also see a little bit more of the dark side of Sirius in both this book and this film. They do do that. They don't show as much about how a bit of a dick Sirius is. Uh, let's see. Again, this film does a decent job, so there's not a lot to say. The, again, they do, they cut, it's slimmed down a lot. They cut out bits and pieces, trying to think of what else they cut out. It's hard to say because they, they again they do do they do decent job. Uh, one of the issues I think some people have had is they screw with the centaurs because obviously somehow these people don't know what a centaur is because um, they have them name in the film. Uh, centaurs are half human, half horse. They speak in human. 
because they can, they don't, they, they get, they're half human, their the entire top half is human. Um, they do, um, why on earth can I not remember her horrible, horrible name? Um, in fact, I, let's see, why on earth can I not remember her name? <laughs> she is the worst person, uh, one of the worst villains in all of movie history. Uh, let's see if I can find her name. I'm on IMBD here. Let me jump into Order of the Phoenix. There we go. Give me Order of the Phoenix and Umbridge. Dolores Umbridge. They do act, they do Umbridge very, very well um, in this film. They do apparently show her with film, uh, with pens, which of course is um, inappropriate because, you know, they use quills uh, in Harry Potter and they can't... It, Quills are hard. I think I've tried quills. It's nearly impossible to, if you're not used to it. In fact, that's probably a plot hole in these films. How do the Muggleborns learn how to work with quills? It, it, it takes a lot of practice. Um, but moving on, they do her pretty well, though they do make her a little bit um, more of a school principal who's irritated with people rather than a fascist dictator um, who's just out to attack the people who she are who goes against her regime, because she, um, Umbridge is, wouldn't say she's for fudge, but she likes power. So, yeah, that's, that's the big thing with her. Uh, she's very big on power. She doesn't necessarily, she's in the ministry for the sake of power, and that's it. And they do her very decently well. Um, the kicking out of Dumbledore, her issues with, um, McGonagall and some of the other teachers, they um, they don't do Hagrid very well in this film. Uh, not the actor, it's just they don't give him a lot of background or screen time or explanation. Uh, he's not teaching. Um, they, they have tendency to cut out the classes in this. They do this very good in the first couple of first three movies, but the rest of them, they have a tendency to cut out school. Um, so he doesn't show up till later when he show uh, in the film when he shows up earlier in the school year uh, to actually teach classes, including all about the Thessals, uh, which are the invisible horses that Harry, that show up in this film because um, Harry can, after seeing Digger, he die, he can now see them. And this is where they introduce Luna, Lovegood. Um, they finally introduce her. She, she shows up in book five. They do her decently well. Uh, the actress who played her, if I remember the backstory with her, uh, she was uh, either anorexic or bulimic, and she met. She was obsessed with the Harry Potter books, and she met Rowling in the hospital. And Rowling said, um, "We're doing these movies. Uh, if you're better, uh, try out for Luna." And she did, and she got the part. So, and she's a very good actress. She does very, very good in these films. She plays the character very, very well, and she's a very, very important character. She shows up in the rest of the films uh, and the rest of the books. So she plays uh, the actress who plays her, and I'll see if I can give her give her a name here. Um, let's see, where is she? Uh, they're not showing her on the top here. Uh, let's see, cannot remember her name. You all the cast and crew here, because I didn't have not memorized these people. Let's see, where is Luna? Luna, 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 not the Lupin. Ah, let's see, she's scrolling down here. See if I can find the actress's name. Here we go, Avina Lynch. Um, so she does a she does a very good job of playing Luna in this film, and they they portray it very well. This film is done decently. Um, the director is different from the last film, which is obvious because it's done better. Um, so this is David Yates. So. He's the one who does it. I don't know if he does the rest of the films. He might, but I don't think so. I will get into that when I do books, uh, film six. And my book six is coming out on Monday, so that will show up. I, as I said, I'm doing the rest of these. This is, it's kind of disjointed because the, it, 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 they do, again, they do a decent job. They fudge some stuff. Um, there are some issues, obviously, because other things have been left out of the films. Uh, trying to think. I'm pretty sure there's house elves in this. So they probably cut them out. 
Uh, they, they have a tendency to not really have, the, I'm pretty sure Dobie's in here because Dobie's trying to help Harry incessantly and he works at Hogwarts. So they, they cut out Dobie almost completely. So you don't see much of Dobie in here, which is sad because he's a highly important character, uh, despite being a house elf. So they, let's see, heard stories. I'm not a boy and I wasn't paying attention to this. Uh, they apparently Harry does not really well represent a 15 year old boy when it comes to girls. So not, he's very, very awkward. Um, and they do do a little bit of that with Cho Chang and his relationship with her, uh, not as much, but again, they do this film decently. It's a decent film as compared to the giant mess that was book four and the darkness that comes in book six. So, uh, again, that's why this is a little rambly. Not to mention, I don't know the book very well because I can't stand it. Uh, it again, it ended, up, it ended up in my closet for a while. And I let it, lent it to my sister who lost, briefly lost the dust jacket and then found it again after she moved. Uh, I never, I, sh I let her get her own copies after that because uh, I have hardback copies of these books. But yeah, this book's ended up, it, again, it ended up in my closet. So um, I'm not as familiar with it. But Harry is not a happy person. He's not a good person in these books. Um, the other thing that they do that's funny is they have the, uh, when they go to the Department of Mysteries, everybody, he, Harry grabs the prophecy and it speaks aloud, which does not happen in the books and devoids the point. Because the Death Eaters basically want to know what the prophecy is. They don't actually need um, Harry Dumbledore's when he's um, groveling. That's the best way you can explain it. At the end of the book, uh, he's groveling to Harry after Harry destroys his office because, you know, Harry's pissed off. Um, and, have, and in some way, he has a right to be, particularly at Dumbledore, because Dumbledore's being a dick. Um, Dumbledore explains to him the prophecy, which doesn't actually prophesize Harry at all. Um, and that's what he kind of explained to him. It's Voldemort shows Harry. It could have been, and I mentioned this in my film review or my book review, it could have been Harry or Neville Longbottom, but Dumbledore chose Harry because the, the prophecy describes both. It, it could be either one. Both were born at the end of July. Both of his parents were in the Order of the Phoenix. Both of them had uh, gotten away from Voldemort three times. So Voldemort chose Harry. Um, and that's made, it's the, one of the points of the uh, books and turning point in Harry's story in the fact that Harry makes the choice to fight Voldemort. He does not have to. It is not, you make, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. He, he, he's, he's, it's his choice. So, um, I just noticed, not only is there my calico in here, but we have another problem. I want to bring in the other problem. Let's look, look, the other problem is smaller. So this is the film debut of Jasper who is a Siamese mix and a nuisance who just appeared underneath my desk. Jasper, you're a nuisance. So I'm going to end that with this demented little floof ball. Jasper, can you be still? No, he's going to go down uh, and I'm going to have to let him out. Um, he just appeared underneath the desk. He can, as you notice, he's very tiny. He's um, under three months old right now and under under two, I think under three pounds. He's still very, very little uh, and very, very irritating and very cute, which is why he gets away with things because he's very, very cute. Uh, Kendra does not like him. Kendra doesn't like anybody uh, except for possibly the humans. So I'm going to wrap this up. Again, this, it's a, compared to the um, last film, it's a decent film. It covers the books, but again, check out Dom Noble's channel, one in general, because he's great. And two, he does better than this than me. Um, my cats are moving. So I am going to end this here. Uh, if you like this review, check out the rest of my Harry Potter stuff. I do a bunch of more interesting reviews and both book and film and some homeschooling stuff um, as well. No cat. I have milk sitting here next to me and no, not for cats. So that is it. Thank you. Like and subscribe again if you want to see more of my stuff and check out if you just jumping in, check out the rest of my Harry Potter stuff and then I have the rest coming up. Thank you.